Yeah, so um, this is a demonstration on how to create a mannequin inside of Katia. So notice I'm sitting in a product. It's actually the product structure workbench, and I've got a part inserted. The part itself doesn't have any geometry. It's just a, uh, a part that's uh, part of the assembly. So I'm going to go to uh, Start, and I'm going to go to ergonomic design and analysis and I'm going to go to human builder keeping in mind though that you need to be inside of a product and if you're not inside of a product Katia will start one for you um, at this stage I want to insert a mannequin so I go to the, my um, this toolbar let's see what toolbar this is called so this is the mannequin tool <clears throat> so when I come over I can go insert a mannequin and it wants to know um, what's going to be the parent of this mannequin and that's just going to be the product as you see here uh, keeping in mind that you know you can have products inside of product so katia wants to know which one you want to insert it into give it a product name <clears throat> and uh, a gender in this case uh, either man or woman and a percentile so um get back to this in just a moment uh, so as far as options are concerned, you've got some populations that are available to you, American, Canadian, and so forth. You can create your own populations. Um, I'm not going to cover how to do that, but um, so just choose the ones that are available for you here. Uh, you can do a whole body uh, or you can just do a right or left forearm. Let's go with a whole body and a reference point uh, for when you drop the mannequin in. Uh, H point is somewhere in the hip area, but you can do I point, left foot, right foot, and so forth. So uh, H point is a good place to start with unless you have a reason for doing one of the other ones. And back to here as far as 50 percentile, uh, the mannequin populations um, come with um, both mean and standard deviation values for certain data points. And the 50 percentile, of course, just means that uh, when you look at the population, which is um, based off of a normal distribution, half is going to be above 50 percentile and the other half will be below. So it's a good starting place for design purposes and unless you got a reason for going um, something other than 50 percentile. So I'm going to select OK and it's going to drop my mannequin in. Notice where it dropped it in in reference to uh, <clears throat> the existing part and the Katia world um, that's because of the H point is is going to be about this size th this location on the mannequin so um, the mannequin itself is um, comes in kind of this default orientation if I were to come over to the tree and right click, you there's some couple of things you might want to be aware of. Um, you can go under posture and you can um, uh, allow the mannequin to sit. So if I selected this, the mannequin would sit. And then um, notice if I go back to initial, it stands back up. And notice how the movement is around uh, this H point. Uh, if you had, let's say, your reference point at the feet, then the feet would be stationary and the rest of the body would move in relation to the actual feet itself. Um, and you got some, um, don't worry about these other ones for right now. So uh, when you're looking at the mannequin, you have um, some some parts of the body such as the head so if I just select the head uh, here you can see the head selected here you've got a line of sight which you can't see but there is a line of sight coming out from the eyes you've got a spine and the spine should be broken up into two regions the lumbar and thoracic uh, and then the right arm as you might imagine is broken up into uh, the uh, the regular arm and the forearm which you, is, you would expect but also the hand and the clavicle region um, and then the fingers uh, thumb and the remaining four fingers <clears throat> keeping in mind that all these uh, 
um, parts of the body can be moved. And the left arm is the same in the right leg as well has a thigh, the leg itself, the foot, and even the toes can be moved. Even though those tend to be a little more challenging to move than the hands. Um, so those are the basic parts of the body that can be moved. Uh, don't worry about profiles for right now. Nor do I think at this point you need to worry about settings. Um, so how do you go about moving um, parts of the mannequin? Well, if I came over here to um, this toolbar, and let me just drag this out so you can see what it is. So this is um, the mannequin posture toolbar. And there is an option here for uh, posture editor. So if I went into that and I selected, let's say, well, i got to select the mannequin. So select the mannequin. It's going to pull up this posture editor, uh, editor for this mannequin. And so let's say that I went into the arm. And then I've got the choice of doing the right arm or the left arm. And then I've got the choice of degrees of freedom. Uh, flexing is when, let's say this is you're working your biceps. That's when you're actually doing like a bicep curl. So... And then extension is when you're extending your forearm. So these are two ergonomic terms that you need to be familiar with. And then here, and you can see it, so that's the degree of freedom that I'm working with on that on that um, joint. So that's going up and down. So, um, and then uh, other degrees of freedom. So this particular joint has uh, three different uh, ranges of motion so that's the flexon extension then you have abduction and adduction which is going to be moving in and out again more ergonomic terms that you need to know and then the medial rotation and lateral rotation would be just the rotation of that joint again these are all ergonomic terms that you need to be very familiar with and typically whenever I set a degree value for one of these uh, motions I will I set the same for both the left and the right arm. I wish Katia had a way to just copy them over, but it doesn't. Um, and uh, let's say I went with forearm. And so for forearm, you've got just the two uh, ranges of motion. you got the flexion and extension. This is where it shows like the, the uh, tricep exercise. And then uh, the flex on would be like the bicep exercise if you want to relate it that way and then also pronate and subination um, so that's going to be the subination and the pronation means going out so um, pronation subination and extension and i may be getting these terms backwards but um, so for the spine again you have uh, you have the full spine motion possible here. And, you, and I'm guessing here you got two different ranges of motion. And no, you got three. So you got plexon extension. You got lateral left and lateral right. Yeah, that makes sense. That's just moving the body left and right. And then you've got um, rotation. Rotating the body left and right. Um, but you can also break these down to just let's say the lumbar motion and there's going to be a thoracic here as well so i'm not going to go over all of these but these are just ways to be able to move the mannequin to get in this case him in the position that he needs to be in um as far as moving the mannequin around this can get tricky at times so i'm going to try to i like to move it with the 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 compass uh, but like I said, just said, sometimes this can be tricky. And so I have to, unless I'm working with it every day, sometimes I have to try to remember what I'm supposed to do here. But let me take the compass, see if I can get this to work the first time. I'm going to take the compass, come over and try to dock it to my mannequin. And let's see if this is actually going to move. If I can't get this to work. <laughs> Oop, I, what happened there? So, um, oh, and it's moving. Hey, I got it to work the first time. Um, so I don't have to worry about editing the, this out of the video. So notice I'm able to move the mannequin around. And I guess it's worth repeating there. How did I do that? Um, so I pre-selected the mannequin and move it over. 
dock it and then it looks like it docked to the H point too so that's interesting to know and move it around as needed and including rotation so you get six degrees of freedom where you can move the mannequin so I wonder what would happen if I didn't pre-select the mannequin let's see what happens um, so you notice it's not necessarily going to the H point but let's see what happens see if it will let me move it yeah it still lets me move it it's not always that easy so I guess I'm just getting lucky um, so um, but again very powerful uh, to get the mannequin let's say you want the mannequin to be uh, in a chair sitting down in a chair well then you can come back here to um, mannequin profile and you can go to posture and go sit you can take the mannequin move him over and have him sit in the chair and uh, be able to be ready to use for uh, other parts of on the workbench as needed so that's the basic use of a mannequin i don't think there's really anything else that I need to cover here at this stage of the game. Um, there are certainly lots of, <clears throat> excuse me, like, certainly lots of tools that you can use here, but I think we'll just end it there for this video. But again, this is just the basic use of a mannequin. Uh, you can certainly come in and drop in more than one mannequin, um, but there's lots of other things that we can do as well with this. Uh, so maybe I'll record some of those later.